Hey guys, Frank Cox here. I'm the Barbecue Pit Engineer. Welcome to the Smoker Builder YouTube channel. Hey, on today's video, we're gonna put skids underneath of this thing, so stay tuned. All right, guys, welcome back. So what we're doing here is we're working on our thousand gallon build project. And by the way, don't forget, we've got a set of plans we're working on for this build. By the time you see this video or shortly after it, there'll be a link in the description where you can grab plans so you can build this pit at the same time we're doing it if you want. Um, so anyway, on today's video, I am like super busy with uh, phone calls and stuff like that. Um, just handling sales and stuff like that and support of our customers and I've got a full day ahead of me so Aaron's going to come in and he's going to go ahead and work on this sled today and uh, I'm super excited to see what he's going to do with this thing. The last few builds he kind of just took it and went with it and they really turned out great. So uh, anyway as he's making his way over here <laughs> he's got some stuff in his hands doing the play by play so what are you going to do here, Aaron? Well, we got to get some legs together. Yeah. But before that, we need to get some rails together. Yeah. So I'm going to find us some rectangular tubing. I'm going to get it laid out along the length of our cooker and see where we can plug these legs in. And like always, I'm going to look for repeating lines. So chances are I'm going to catch this weld seam here, the mm -hmm. second weld seam, and our third element, the firebox. That's cool, yeah. So you're going to have basically three, three sets of legs on here. And what you're saying, that second weld seam, you mean the one in the middle of the tank, I think. So like one here, one there, and then one on the firebox, well, or maybe that, split the gap or something. Yeah, and that's those are the conversations you're going to have to have. Because <laughs> there's so many options yeah. here. Uh, definitely going to need one on this end, and then the other side, it could be talked about. Yeah, we yeah. could put one on the firebox or one just short. Mm -hmm. I was right. actually looking at the other. Oh, the other seat. Way down there. Yeah, gotcha. I was. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. A little bit yeah. further. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Well, hey, man, I'm going to go up there and get to work and just kind of let right. you do it. By the way, I'll be listening for you to yell at me in case the thing okay. falls on you or anything like that happens. Listen, listen for Morse code. <laughs> send, send Dixie after me, right? That's right it. On. Thanks, dude. All right. Well, it's time to get busy on our skid. And. First things first, we've got to do some layout because I have no idea what the legs are going to be. I know they're going to be square tubing and kind of an angle, but how do we get there? Well, rather than guessing and constantly just trying to fit a piece where it looks right, I'm just going to lay it out. And I use a couple of rules of thumb as I do this to help me be consistent every time I get to a project like this. And I have to decide what it looks like and what values to use. I just go back to a system that way it's always kind of consistent throughout all of my projects. So the first thing I'm going to do is I always work with the biggest thing or the most important facts first and that's two things. I have a diameter of the propane tank which I can't change it is what it is and I have the height of where that cooking grate wants to be and we talked about this prior to us starting and we decided that 36 was our number so 36 inches from the ground floor to the center of our cooking grate, the bottom grate is where I want to be. So I have a table here. It's not my most ideal size for what I have, but it's empty and it's here and we're going to use it today. So I am going to start. I have a couple tools here to help me with my layout. I have a, a, a cardboard, uh, I have a CAD piece of CAD here, <laughs> which is just the profile of our outside diameter, which is 41 inches of our propane tank. I have some tubing, which is cut long. This is going to allow me to just play with some shapes as I'm trying to figure out what I'm making. And I got my tape measure, which is going to tell me where I need to be time and time again. So I found the center of my table which I went just off because I have a hole in the center of my table. You're going to have to compromise all through the fabrication process. It's never going to be perfect. So I'm just off the table. That allows me to get the full measurement of my table. I can look at it on my tape. And I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to draw the radius of our propane tank. So we know that our propane tank is 41 inches in the outside diameter. So I'm going to take my 41 inch increment and I'm gonna cut that in half because we're gonna draw half of this and that brings us to 20 and a half. That's our measurement. So I'm gonna come up to the top of this and I drew a center line here. 
So I'm, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a center line on my table. That's gonna be the very first reference I have. Once I have that center line, I'm gonna measure off the center 20 and a half inches to the right and to the left. I'll make a mark and I'm gonna draw another 90 degree line. So we have one, two, three parallel lines. And this is an opportunity to come back with your tape measure and make sure that these are all indeed parallel. And you can go a step further and do a cross measurement and make sure that this measurement is the same. And now I have to figure out what kind of legs we're gonna do. So this is where your, all your little tools will start coming into play. Like I said, this is the outside dimension of our propane tank. So we're gonna use this just kind of as a reference on here. And you can see it, it's gonna line up with these little hash marks that I have. And that's gonna represent the bottom of our tank. But before you have this, you have to either draw it on the cardboard and cut it out, or you can just lay it out on your table. So back to our 41. So I cut that in half, I'm at 20 and a half now. So what I've done is go to 20 and a half on your tape measure. You'll put that right at the apex of that line on your table there. And then just start making your way around and making hash marks with that measurement. There we are. My old eyes can see. Put a little hash on there. And I'll move three inches on the curve, put it at 20 and a half again, and I'll make another line on there. Over time, you're gonna get all enough points of interest here, it'll generate that curve. So we have two inch tubing laid out for our legs here. So the bottom skid will be two by four, and our uprights are gonna be two by two. Uh, aesthetically, I like dividing things in half. If I'm working with two or four, then we'll use one inch to split that two, or we'll use two inch to split that four. So that's what we're doing here. We're using a two by two on top of the four by four. So we have our, we have our two inch tubing, and this is the, actually gonna be the final shape of the leg. We've done this layout and done the math, and this is how it turns out. This is 140 degrees here. We have 95 degrees on the bottom roughly 22 inches long, which kind of looks like a short little stub of a leg for a thousand gallon cooker, but you have to think we have four more inches of tube or rail that this is gonna sit on, and that's represented down here. So let's get back to our layout. Our three parallel lines, right, left, and center. We're gonna, I'm gonna come in one inch on my leg. So when this is on top of the rail, rather than being on top of the two inch, I'm gonna have it inbound a little bit and I'm gonna steal a one inch free space. And what that's gonna allow me to do is put a weld on the top side of that and not have to blend it or grind it. It can just live on top of our rail. So I'll make, I'll make one mark going inbound an inch. I'll do that on both sides and that little hash mark will represent the edge of our leg. So this is the edge of our rail and this would be the edge of our leg right here. So I go to my table, I'll mark that one inch there and I know that I'm inbound one inch. But now what? Now I have a straight leg. Well I'm not after a straight leg, I'm after just a little bit of an incline in like a water tower or, or something with structure. So rather than being 90, we're going to lean that in just a little bit. It's actually standing on its own. So to do that, I go back to my rule of halves. So I got two inch tubing here. I'm gonna come inbound four inches and that's where I decide my inside mark will be. It's kind of a crude rule. I mean, there's really no rhyme or reason other than it's halves, but if you constantly stick to the same thing like that, over time, you're gonna start representing the same look. So maybe four or half's not your thing. Maybe it's another inch or, or back an inch. You just pick somewhere where it feels good. And the more you use that, the more it'll be your little signature. All right, so we have both of our pieces here. These are our legs going up. We're one inch back. We're four inches inbound. And now we gotta, we gotta, we gotta put these together at the bottom. So up here, is our tank, represented our tank, which actually looks pretty good, gives you a really good visual of what's coming here. And these are gonna live on our rails. 
which we're going this way. So this is the floor, this would be the top, and then our rails are gonna go long. So by moving that one inch inbound, I'm actually gonna be hanging off of the rail by one inch. But I did that on purpose because I wanna put a cross member in there. And this is gonna keep our rails taut to each other so they won't spread apart under load. If you have all this pressure coming down on these cookers and there's nothing keeping these rails parallel with each other, they're, they're liable to frog leg out or bend or there's a lot of inertia in this huge cooker. When this thing's said and done, it's gonna be close to 5,000 pounds. Maybe a little less with an uninsulated box, but it's heavy. So you gotta accommodate for this thing to be stout. And part of doing that is tying in uh, loose ends. And to me, on something this scale, this would be a loose end not having anything connecting the bottom to a frame to the other side. So simply we just, we're gonna put in a cross member. So now I have my cross member laid out crudely. And I got my top legs laid out. They're fitting pretty good in my template. And at this point, I'm ready to tack these together. So what I'll do is I'll tack this side and that's gonna provide me an angle here. And I'm gonna match the other side to this side. So they're gonna both have the same angle. And when I get done with that, I'm going to take my other remaining pieces and I'm gonna put them right on top of these. If you do that first, first uh, leg assembly, tack these together, check the angles right to left, and you're liking all that and it's feeling good and it's still laying on the table, smooth out your tacks or any kind of profile you've created and layer that and put on your, your next layer. So what are we gonna do with this? Well, it's gonna generate the same part. You're generally just, you're just making a second twin to the part on the bottom. All right, well, I'm gonna clean up these edges. I'm gonna refine my layout and start really double checking as I go and we're gonna get this thing assembled. Stick with us. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. And by the way, you know, if you're wanting to build some custom smokers of your own, we have a wide selection of DIY plans available at smokerplans.net. Now you can shop several smokers from gravity feeds to traditional Texas offsets. Uh, if you're just starting out, we also have an online course with Smoker Builder U. Uh, you get on there, you can gain access to all of our online courses to help with your build process. Uh, we'll show you how to do that, Smoker Builder U. Until uh, next time, this is Mr. Void, and uh, we'll see you later.